at the beginning of the beginning, before old Adam and even God, there was only darkness in the world. There was no earth, no sun, no moon, nothing but a sea of water which spread throughout the boundless abyss. Everywhere you turned and looked, there was only endless water that stood still like a mirror. Once, it is not known when or how, because no one was there to see, the waters began to move little by little, as if someone were blowing on its surface. Large ripples then appeared, as they do on the surface of a lake when a frog leaps or a stone is thrown into it. These ripples, crashing into each other, formed waves, and the waves began to foam. The waves carried their foam, their incessant movement pushing in towards the middle of the endless water, where all the foam gathered and gathered like a huge water lily. A butterfly and the worm got lost in this foam, which, it is said, came from the world below us, from the other realms. It is thus that the two supreme beings came to be according to the myth of the creation of the world in Romanian folklore. My name is Radiana, and I shall carry you to that mythical time when the two beings, one light and one dark, made order out of chaos and created our world, not out of reason, but eternal strife, as we shall see. After emerging from the depths, the two beings floated on the primordial waters for a while, until their forms changed. The butterfly threw off its wings and transformed into a young man so beautiful that the darkness around him became light, and he was God. And the worm, some time after that, also took the form of a man, but darkness surrounded him, and he was the devil. And because they were born the same and were then the only living beings of this endless pit of water and darkness, they lived in good understanding at first. The devil assumed, however, that they should both be equals and called God his brother. But God did not agree and called him the non-brother, the one unlike him, marking him as his enemy. The devil grew with resentment, and the more he wanted to be acknowledged by God as his brother, the more God rejected him. And as God continued to hate him, the devil became angrier, and when he saw God changing into a dove to fly over the waters, he grew three pairs of wings and, nestling in the water, he said sternly, You may take the ether, for I take the waters. Later, God was walking on the waters and the devil was stalking him. He complained to God that, as long and wide as the face of that endless water is, he has no place harder and drier where to rest his bones. He tried to make a bed out of the foam, but you see, foam like foam, it all vanished in his palms, and so God commanded him to dive to the bottom of the sea and bring him a handful of mud from there in his name. The devil dived to the depths of the deep, and there his desire got the better of him. He took mud, but in his own name, not God's, and quickly rose towards the surface. The waters, however, beat him from all sides. The mud ran through his fingers in small streaks of sand, and when the devil reached the top and looked in his palms, there was nothing. Then God said to him, See if you did not listen to me? This happened because you did not take the mud on my behalf. As God spoke, the devil remained submerged in the water up to his knees. Then he lowered himself a second time to the bottom of the water and, resentful, he said, I take mud in my name and not God's. But God heard him and, blowing gently, froze the surface of the water. The devil squeezed his fist as hard as he could so that the water would not take the mud again, but when he came out, he hit the ice block and struggling to break it, all the mud he had taken fell out of his hand. Now he was submerged in the water up to his waist. And so he dived for a third time and said, I take mud in both my name and God's. But even now, he could not lift a speck of mud and remained submerged up to his neck. The fourth time, God blew harder on the water and the ice spread as thick as a palm and the devil, seeing that he could no longer break it and fearing that he would drown, said with great spite in his voice as he had been ordered by God, I take mud in the name of God. But as he was ascending to the surface he added, and mine. For this, when he reached the top, he only had a little mud trapped under his fingernails. And so God picked the dirt under the devil's fingernails with a piece of straw, and as the devil had long nails, God found enough mud to make a patty. He blew on it, covered it with his palm, and kept kneading it until it extended into a large bed. Well now, said God, we have a bed where we can sit and rest when we are tired. 
We do, brother, answered the devil, who, just like the fly returning from plowing, also took the credit for the creation of the earth. As the evening came, God lay down in the bed he had made for himself, making room for the devil to sleep as well. Now that we've created it, shouldn't we bless it? The devil asked. Now I shall not do anything because it's late. We will bless it tomorrow, God answered and lay down pretending to sleep. But his devious desires did not let the devil sleep. A diabolical thought had crossed his mind. To push God into the water, let him drown, and remain the master of the bed of earth. He waited until he thought that God was soundly asleep, got up gently, and began to push him into the water. But as he pushed, God rolled along the bed of earth, and the earth rolled with him, growing and stretching like dough. And the devil pushed and sweated, but God would not fall. After a while, the devil stopped in bewilderment. He thought that the bed was small and that he would quickly be rid of God. Not understanding what happened, he thought that the bed would be smaller behind him and started to push God toward the west. But even here the earth extended as God rolled, and the devil began to lose his patience. He pushed God to the north, then to the south, and when daylight came, the devil realized that he was going around in circles. All around, the earth stretched as far as his eyes could see. He wondered and did not understand, but believing that God had just moved, he quickly lay down next to him, pretending to sleep. When he felt that God had woken and sat up as if after sleep, he also pretended to get up, marveling at the unusual expanse of the earth. God smiled, and when the devil reminded him of last night's promise to bless the earth, he said, alluding to the overnight wanderings in the shape of a cross, Why should we bless this any more than I already had? And so it is said that the earth was created by God and the devil, named in Romanian folk records as Furtat, which means blood brother, and Nefurtat, which means the opposite, or the one unlike the blood brother. The Smith, with variants that are spread across Eastern Europe from Aromanian and Slavic Macedonian stories to creation myths found in Hungary, Ukraine and Bulgaria, has an obvious Christian layer added to it which many still believe to be the product of Bogomilic influence, but in truth, the Smith is built on a much older cosmogonic model that predates the Bogomils, who were a Christian neognostic and dualist sect founded in the 10th century in the First Bulgarian Empire. Romanian historian of religions Mircea Eliade argued against the widespread belief that the antagonistic duality of the creators in the Smith stems from the Bogomilic tradition, stating that the myth cannot be found in any Bogomilic text, nor on Bosnian territory, which was the center of Bogomilism until the 15th century, and it is also absent in Serbia and Herzegovina. Rather, Eliade explained that variants of the myth are found in regions that the Bogomil sect never reached, such as Ukraine, Russia, and the Baltic. He further suggested that the dualistic beliefs represented in the myth may stem from ancient Thracosithian beliefs that were preserved in the Balkans and the Carpatho danubian regions, and like other researchers, concluded that the myth is an extremely archaic narrative plot that has collapsed into a Christian metaphor through alter storytelling in more recent times. According to him, the Romanian cosmogonic myth reveals its specific features after we decipher not only the prehistory of the Balkan and Central Asian dualism, but also the hidden meaning of God's fatigue after he created the earth, a surprising expression of a deus otiosus or inactive God, reinvented by popular Christianity in a desperate effort to disassociate God from the imperfections of the world and the emergence of evil. It must be noted that, although the first explicit conception of dualism came from the ancient Persian religion of Zoroastrianism around the mid-5th century BC, dualistic cosmology is a widespread belief in both traditional and scriptural religions across the world, and that is mainly because of its fundamental philosophy regarding the function of the strife of opposing and complementary forces that co-create reality. And so we see this in mythologies featuring two demiurges. In Slavic mythology, for example, the white god Belobog and the black god Chernobog are described as being rivals since the beginning of time as each tries to claim their share of the world they created. Although there is a lack of primary source material showing that these gods were pre-Christian creations, we see the same dualistic theme in all their myths. We see it in the reconstructed Proto-Indo-European myth of Manu and Yemo, who are said to be the origin of other Indo-European mythical creator pairs from the Indian Manu and Yama to the Roman Romulus and Remus. And so, the Romanian twins of creation echo the same origins, with 
for that personified as the manifestation of light and water, and ne for that personified as the manifestation of darkness and earth. And they are considered deities representative of the Indo-European primordial beings, as one represents vital force and the other immortality. One is life, and the other is non-life. Their existence seems mutually dependent and inseparable, and their metamorphosis from a worm and butterfly reflects the eternal cycle of transformation. Likewise, their imminent strife as the only two living beings in the void is a reflection of the very condition of existence and the act of creation. One could not create without the other, and in the end, both understood that each is greater if they work together. Although, one could say that the dark twin, the devil, was in fact sacrificed and immersed, albeit not as brutally as depicted in Indo-European cosmogony when one twin kills the other to create the world. In the Romanian version, the twins make a compromise for the creative sacrifice, or so it seems to me. The devil sacrifices his primacy as an equal and pride as a co-creator, and immerses himself in the primordial waters, which is symbolic of when he later becomes the lord of the underworld, as, unlike his brother who was once a butterfly and later turned into a dove, he emerged from a worm, and although he grew three pairs of wings later on, he still claimed the waters which would come to encompass the realm of the dead and hell in Romanian folklore. It is also worth noting that the collaboration between the twins in Romanian mythology has been suggested by some scholars to reflect a fundamental belief in the harmony of nature of the archaic agrarian society in these parts, hence the lack of bloodshed between the primordial beings. Beyond the motif of the two demiurges or the primordial twins, the Romanian myth of the creation of the earth also exhibits other widespread motifs, such as that of the cosmic ocean or the primordial waters known in Romanian folklore as Saturday's water, and the earth diver, which is one of the oldest motifs diffused throughout all of Eurasia, India and North America, and so it can be found in many of the world's mythologies and religions. Indologist Michael Witzel has shown that the earth diver myth is between 75,000 and 130,000 years old and it has originated in Africa from where it migrated to Eurasia, through Siberia and back to the Indo-Iranian region. The way the earth diver motif has endured in Eastern European creation myths is fascinating, and my dear friend and specialist in Indo-European mythology, Krakenford, made a wonderful video comparing variants from Romania, Hungary, Bulgaria, Ukraine and Russia. It puts our story into perspective, and so I invite you to watch it after this. But in Romanian folklore, the myth of the earth diver is told with some variations from one region to another, and in all versions of the tale, the supreme beings are floating on the cosmic ocean, and one of them has a revelation and desires to bring land to the surface without any clear motive. Then, one of them embodies yet another widespread motif that historian of religious Mircealiade refers to as Deus Otiosus, or Idol God, meaning that a creator may appear active, but lacks a true connection to his creation. And so, the second creator, such as the devil in our story, becomes the agent of creation and the binding force between the first creator and creation itself. Even through his trickery, disobedience and claims to divine equality, the devil causes unexpected things to emerge and leads the creation in new directions. Although the two supreme beings have seemingly opposite natures and each is tasked with creating and ruling a specific part of the universe, both have an intrinsic demonic nature and one of them has to drown the shadow of his dual, unnatural existence, often personified in his counterpart. And this raises interesting questions about which of the two creator is the bearer of demonism in the end. Christianity has solved this problem by making the light brother, Furtatul, God, the creator par excellence, and the embodiment of original good, while turning the dark brother, Nefertatul, the fell demiurge, into the devil. But it is essential to know that the devil is co-eternal with God and not ontologically dependent on him. He actively participated in the creation of the world, and although he has a chthonic nature, he is not evil. And although he is an equally potent counterpart to his brother, who is the personification of the perpetual force of order, he is left struggling in his shadow. The devil, depicted as a trickster in the many versions of the tale, disturbs the order maintained by his brother by bringing forth elements of chaos and thus contributing to the transformation of a dormant and infertile world into an animated one. And so, the emergence of reality depends on the devil to a great extent, and despite this, he is rejected and humiliated by his brother which creation praises in the end. As such, later on, 
his trickster side becomes more pronounced, and he begins to master a destructive force that modifies and degrades the original creation through his initiatives and inventions. And so, many variants of the creation myth and legends stemming from it depict a dualistic pair whose image is vastly different from that presented in Christianity. God is often helpless and lacking in creativity, requiring assistance from the devil, who is more inventive and essential in manifesting an animated reality. As one legend puts it, God was kinder than the devil, but he did not have such power as the devil. And here I must add that the belief in God's kindness is often misguided and a false attribute to his seemingly light depiction. After all, much of the creation in the myth was done at the behest of the devil, who wanted to make the world more functional, such as when he suggested that they create the sun and the moon so that people may see in the dark, a thought that did not occur to God. And then, God also proves himself many times to be manipulative when not only does he appropriate the devil's creativity, but also makes his brother execute those creative ideas on his behalf. And this is a common theme throughout many of the myth's versions. In another retelling, God became sick and the devil came and asked him what was wrong. God replied that he was dying and that he needed mud to heal. Afraid to lose his brother, the devil dived in the water to retrieve mud from the bottom of the ocean, but by the time he rose to the surface, the waters reclaimed their mud and the devil only had a little of it trapped under his fingernails. In this version, we are shown the dark side of the otherwise radiant Furtat who realizes the limits of his power and takes advantage of his brother's unlimited love to achieve his goals. By pretending to be sick, he forces his stronger brother to dive into the sea and retrieve mud to create land. In yet another version of the cosmogonic myth, there are four creators, God, the frog, the hedgehog and the bee, which amplifies the primary structure that only had two creators. The frog performs the immersion and plays the role of the earth diver, while the bee carries the mud to the hedgehog who knows how to shape the earth. However, the hedgehog is scorned by God's claims to be the sole creator, despite him not being able to perform any of the key moments of the demiurgic act on his own. And demonism is present in this legend too, with some of the creators using cunning to achieve their goals. For example, the frog is persuaded by the demiurge into finding land at the bottom of the ocean, and the bee tricks the hedgehog into revealing how to model the earth. In another version of the myth, God has an even less favorable image, as a fallible, lonely and angry demiurge, who throws his hatchet into the primordial waters from which the cosmic tree sprung, and under which the devil appeared. The devil then offered to become God's brother and friend, and this made God happy. But this suggests that the coming into the world of God's brother was generated by anger, placing the devil as the being at the center of the world, or the axis mundi, and thus setting into motion the entire creation. And so we are shown throughout this myth and its retellings, an image of a rather idle, self-satisfied God, and a devil who plays an active role in the creation of the world. But you will learn more about him and his evolution from an earth diver into a diabolical trickster in my next video. In the meantime, Krakenfort has put this story into comparative context, and so if you'd like to dive into other variants from the east of Europe and uncover their origin, you should watch his video next. Until we meet again, remember, the devil is not as dark as you may think.